Germany from the years of its founding through the Second World War is a unique story. The country represented some of the best of humanity as art, philosophy, science, engineering, and business thrived and flourished in its early days. However, it also represented some of the worst of humanity as the nation was the prime instigator in both world wars and committed atrocious acts against humanity. Ultimately, the wars were detrimental to the country as they took a harsh toll on the economy and country at large. In this video, we will be analyzing Germany, tracing it from its origins as a unified nation to the end of World War II in order to analyze the history of Germany's economy. When Germany became a unified nation in 1871, its economy was underdeveloped and lagged behind other large nations such as the United Kingdom, France, and the United States. However, Germany rapidly transformed its economy and soon became one of the world's most advanced economies in less than half a century. One of the main driving forces behind its rapid transformation was the advancement of its scientific and educational institutions. In the 1800s, Germany had one of the highest literacy rates in the world. Furthermore, German scholars transformed the nation's universities into research universities, where they pursued innovation and the discovery of new ideas. Science and engineering thrived in these schools. In addition, many technical universities arose where engineering and science were at the forefront. Many of these scientific discoveries made at these universities were used by entrepreneurs to innovate and produce new products. Germany experienced an array of new technologies. Everything from the automobile engine to the antenna were invented during this period. In summary, universities and businesses working together aided in various novel technologies being devised, which helped modernize the country. There was a third factor too, which aided in these endeavors, and that was the role of the government. The government aided in the development of the railway system. The development of railways increased the demand of goods such as steel, coal, and iron. It also increased the demand for engineers and other skilled workers. Furthermore, while the economy was transforming, the government implemented the first welfare state. Various social programs were implemented such as universal health care, universal education, insurance against work-related injuries, and retirement pensions. These social programs helped facilitate economic growth and stability. The economy grew rapidly as industrial production increased. Wages rose and more people migrated to the cities. The nation's population went from 35 million in 1850 to 67 million by 1913. The manufacturing sector thrived as Germany became a major exporter of goods throughout the world. Germany's economy expanded rapidly starting in 1850 and this growth lasted until 1913. Economic growth lasted until 1914, when World War I erupted. The impact the war had on Germany's economy was significant. Its economy shrank and industrial production declined by 40%. Following the defeat of Germany in 1918, a new form of government was instilled. The Weimar Republic was established and Germany became a constitutional republic. The initial years following the war were tumultuous. The nation amassed huge amounts of debt during the war, as the government merely printed money to fund the war. In addition, Germany had to pay reparation payments to the Allies under the Treaty of Versailles. Under the treaty, Germany had to make reparation payments in either gold or foreign currency. As a result, the German Central Bank used its currency, the German Mark, to purchase foreign currency, which it then used to make the reparation payments with its own currency rapidly losing value, more and more German marks were needed to purchase foreign currency. This resulted in inflation, which eventually led to hyperinflation. By 1922, 7,400 German marks were equal to one US dollar. The mark became practically worthless. In 1923, Germany defaulted on its reparation payments. As a result, France and Belgium occupied the Ruhr Valley in Germany. This was an industrial region of Germany, which contained many factories. The French and Belgians intended to utilize resources made from these factories to make up for the missed reparation payments. 
Much conflict arose as German workers refused to cooperate with the French and Belgian forces. With the backing of the German government, German factory workers went on strike. In order to pay the striking factory workers, the government printed more and more money, and this farther worsened inflation. Newly elected German Chancellor Gustav Streismann pursued a policy of fulfillment in that he wanted to improve international relations by adhering to the Treaty of Versailles and paying the reparation payments. Once relations were improved, he intended to negotiate the treaty to achieve better conditions for Germany. He ordered the striking workers back to work and resumed payment on the reparations. In order to alleviate hyperinflation, a new currency called the Rettenmark was introduced. Germany regained respect from the international community after these reforms. In 1924, the Dawes Committee was established. Representatives from the United States, Britain, France, and Belgium were appointed to help find a solution to the German reparation issue. The Dawes Committee constructed the Dawes Plan. Under the Dawes Plan, French and Belgian troops were ordered to leave the Ruhr Valley. Reparation payments were restructured to be more manageable. Germany's central bank was restructured, and perhaps most importantly, Germany was provided a loan for 200 million US dollars by the United States. This new influx of foreign cash allowed Germany to rebuild its economy. By 1924, its economy was stable and thriving again. The years between 1924 and 1929 in Germany are known as the golden years. However, this growth would soon come to a halt. In October 1929, the United States stock market crashed, triggering the Great Depression. The United States recalled all their foreign loans and ceased sending new loans to foreign countries. Germany had spent the last five years using loans from the United States to rebuild and expand its economy. With these loans now gone, this triggered an economic crisis. In the summer of 1931, the country faced a banking crisis after one of its largest banks, Dotten Bank, collapsed. In addition, 6 million citizens were unemployed by 1932. Discontent with the Weimar government's handling of the economic crisis, the Nationalist Socialist Party increased in popularity as they promised to restore Germany to its former glory and resolve the economic issues at hand. Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany in 1933. By that time, the unemployment rate was 30%. Tackling unemployment was the Nazi government's first priority. The government implemented deficit spending in order to finance massive infrastructure projects, such as the construction of the Autobahn, in order to stimulate economic activity and increase employment. These measures were largely successful, as unemployment dropped down to near zero by 1938. These projects were financed through deficit spending, as the Nazis believed they would pay off their debts once they invaded and plundered other nations' resources. The Nazis also wanted to achieve economic autarky or economic independence from other nations. They learned from World War I that they must be economically self-sufficient in order to wage a successful war. They promoted self-sufficiency and wanted to be completely self-reliant on creating their own goods. Therefore, tariffs were placed on foreign imports. Foreign trade was reduced, however, some foreign trade took place with nations mainly in Southern Europe. As Germany still needed raw materials in which they imported from these nations, the main economic goal of the Nazi government was to rearm its military and prepare for the war. Increasing amounts of government spending and industrial production went to rearming the military. In August 1936, Hitler issued a memorandum calling for the mobilization of the economy in order to be ready for a war within four years. Throughout the war, rationing was implemented across the country. Half of manufactured consumer goods were used for the military. Despite numerous mobilizations of the workforce, Germany faced labor shortages throughout the war. After the invasion of Poland, Germany used war prisoners as slave laborers to compensate for its labor shortage. Many leading German corporations utilized slave labor as well. By 1944, estimates show that a quarter of the German workforce was comprised of slave laborers. Women were called upon to work in the factories as well, and by 1944, they outnumbered men in the labor force. By 1943, Germany's economy transitioned into an all-out war economy, and by 1944, the majority of economic resources were used 
for military production. In the midst of a two-front war, Germany's fate was sealed for defeat as its industrial and military capacity could not keep up with the Allies. Germany suffered tremendous damage throughout the war. Allied forces dropped 2 million tons of bombs on German cities, which resulted in the destruction of over 60 cities and the death of 600,000 German citizens. The war destroyed 4.8 million houses, resulting in 13 million homeless individuals. At the conclusion of the war, much of the country laid in ruins, and Germany was faced with rebuilding itself both literally due to the destruction, and figuratively as self-society and government institutions had to be rebuilt as well. All in all, the story of Germany from its origins as a unified nation to the end of the Second World War is a mixed bag. The country had the potential to be one of the most prosperous and advanced economies in the world during the early 20th century, as it was at the forefront of science, innovation, higher education, and political progressivism. However, the wars derailed the economy, political institutions, and overall livelihood of its citizens. This period of time was not just a pivotal area in Germany's history, but a pivotal era in world history. Overall, the lessons and events that occurred during this period of time are still heavily studied and debated to this day, as this was a critical juncture in human history. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments what other topics you want me to cover in future videos. Thank you and have a great day.